All right, I'm ready to start digitally sketching, and this will also be the same method for digitally inking within Photoshop if you want to go that way. So for my digital sketch, I have my sketched line art layer on top of my blank white layer. I have my blank white layer, which was my background, locked. I do not want to accidentally color on that. And then I'll, I'll just mark the sketch line. Actually, I usually mark it gray. And then the brush I'm using, I choose the brush tool. I go to the tool settings up at the top, and I choose the, the brush that is hard round pressure size, 100% hardness, size around 80 pixels, because I'm using 11 by 14 by, um, I can go a little bit bigger, 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch. And then the opacity for my sketch is only at 70%. So that means I can start sketching loosely, and I'm using kind of a bluish color. And if I ever want to darken, I can just kind of go over it a little bit more, right? And I start with the cranium, the action lines, the direction lines for the eyes. The mandible. The lower jaw the ears, and I'm using what are called basic shapes. This is a good way to sketch your ideas, no matter how complicated or simple they are. Basic shapes are circles, squares, triangles, right? rectangles, ovals, all those variations. Wedge shapes really help, which are triangles with their heads cut off. And then for something as complicated as like the mane on this kind of lion creature, I draw a big shape, and then I cut triangles out of it. And this is how I might digitally sketch. Remember, as long as it's free floating, you don't need to do a whole body illustration. You definitely don't need to do two figures. Then the paws, the arms coming out, on and on. Now, what if I wanted to digitally ink this? I lock this layer, and I go above it, and I might onion skin it a little bit before I lock it, take its opacity down by half. And now I'm going to say my inking line, or inked line, and I'll mark that purple. because this is kind of the, the order of these things. Now the difference is I use the same brush, but I'm going to use it at a 100% opacity, and I'm going to use it at the default black. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and try to steady my hand a little bit. And there's this option, which is very helpful, especially if you tend to be sketchier rather than like really, really clean as you ink, uh, to smooth your lines. So you want your opacity at 100% for your brush, your flow at 100%, and smoothing you can decide to put a little bit higher now that you're refined inking. And this will get rid of some of the jitteriness in your lines, right? So if I start with the eye, it will slow it down a bit, but look how smooth it will make it. And you can do this in Photo P as well as Photoshop. And this is making clean digital line art. So this is a method within Photoshop for it. That will be this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do it within Illustrator, which is my preferred way. But look, I can make circles, and it's mostly Photoshop doing the, the job for me cleaning it up. You can do individual teeth. Remember, this is pressure sensitive for size, so the, the line can get thick to thin based on how hard I press.
You can use as much detail or as little as you want, but this is line-based, not shape-based like your logo. Well, people must be into the drawing now. It's quiet in here. And a lot of it is just trying to maintain your kind of energy and your personality. in how you draw it. Don't be too suspicious of what you're doing, you know, just go with it. And you can see my sketch is really loose. I can put in a lot of details with the digital inking. The interior of the ear, anything I might want to include. <clears throat> so that smoothing setting, which hasn't always been in Photoshop, is, is very handy. <laughs> yeah, the only problem with putting it up high is that it really kind of slows it down, you know, and it won't be as sensitive to all your movements. But it still changes direction pretty well. They have the, the programming on it pretty tight. And honestly, it's supposed to be a little bit better and more responsive than, than tablets like iPad kind of programs, but it's very similar. Now, unlike when we did vector shapes, right, all this is going onto one layer because this is all raster line art. But I'm going to show you how we can turn this into a vector once we have clean line art because it's ideal to have vector line art for a spot illustration. It means it will be incredibly clean no matter the scale you use. Now anytime you want to check it, you can just turn off your sketched line and you see what your line art is. Let's throw the arm in there. And you want your line art to be kind of more like an animator's line. Nice and clean. If you don't want it to have this variation in width, like you want it to be like real animation, you can lock your brush. So you use a brush that is not pressure sensitive to size. It would just be a hard round brush. And then you set the exact dimension of your lines, like say 30 pixels. And then when you draw, everything will always be exactly that width. And it will look, you know, a little bit more machined. And that's really common in animation where everything has to match. But my background is more in print illustration, like comics, editorial cartoons, that kind of thing, where you can play with your line width a lot. Another thing that's nice is if you can contain all of your shapes so that they're fully clean. What do I mean? Because when we get to coloring, We'll do a layer underneath your line art. We're going to use your magic wand with contiguous turned on to grab certain areas, like the mane of this lion. And because all of my line art's really clean, then it becomes incredibly easy just to drop in a color. 
because all of it is easily selectable, right? So we're going to see how that works once we get to digital coloring. So if you, in, you, if you tend to leave a lot of openings in your drawing, you might think of ways that you can clean that up, like contain each shape. It will just make your life easier later. All right, so digital sketching and then digital inking. Now I'm going to show you how we would take that digital inking and turn it into a vector. So what I would do is I would turn off my sketch layer. I could leave my background layer on. I could turn it off. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to save it just as a JPEG or as a PNG. Let's just say I'll do it as a PNG. I'll turn off everything so it's just the, the inked line. And then I'm going to say File, Save a Copy. I haven't even titled this yet. So before I do that, let me make sure I save it with my name and Assignment 5. To the desktop. Okay. Now I'm going to save it as a copy and just save it as a PNG with the free floating lines. This is how we can turn our digital line art that's raster, you know, at 350 pixels per inch. It's pretty clean, but you can see the pixels. How can we clean that up even more? Well, we can turn it into a vector. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that PNG, this one, this free floating ink work, and I'm going to open it up in Illustrator. Now, Illustrator has a tool that I don't know of any freeware that does this. I know of a lot of programs you can pay a little bit for it to do this, but this is called uh, image tracing, and it takes a raster image and turns it into a vector image. So we don't need to necessarily redraw it like we did with our logos because we've already made clean line art. So what I do is I click on it with the large selection tool, it's just floating here in our artboard. Then I go to Properties, and I scroll to the bottom, and I see this option under Quick Actions called Image Trace. I click on Image Trace, and it will give me these options. And I'm going to say Black and White Logo, even though I know it's not Black and White Logo. I don't need it to show me that. So now it's going to detect it. And all of a sudden, it is a vector with no pixels. But it's not solidified yet. It's just previewing because I can't find, I, I don't see the anchor points yet. So what I need to do is click on the advanced options that are next to the image trace options. I open those up. And this is where I can fine tune them. Click that little drop down triangle for advanced. And the most important thing is I'm going to have it ignore the white color. So it's going to ignore white. So that it only traces the black line art and not all the white shapes. Because even though it's a PNG, it still brings in white shapes into Illustrator. I can also play with the threshold of it. You know, how thick are the lines? How thin do I want the lines? This is a really nice way to, to work with your line art. Uh, how many corners do I want? You know, how sharp will they be or how simplified because this can help smooth things out. Because this is a pretty clean drawing, it doesn't have a lot of noise to clean up. We can click on simplify and just say we want fewer anchors. But that's not necessarily what we want, right? But all of these tools are incredibly helpful.